So if I say the name Eddie Cochran, I, I wonder how many of you would know something about him. I mean, if you were like me, you knew the name, you heard it often over the years, but nothing really specific comes to mind, and, and that's a shame as you really did quite a lot in the world of rock and roll. Sure, you would remember Elvis and Chuck Berry and Buddy Holly and, and even Jerry Lee Lewis, and Eddie Cochran was a major influence on quite a number of acts that we are all familiar with. It was noted that in the Beatles Bible that Eddie Cochran's 20 Flight Rock was the song that Paul McCartney sang while auditioning for the Quarrymen. Probably one of Eddie's biggest hits was covered by The Who, though many probably didn't realize it, and that was The Summertime Blues. Additional hit songs from Eddie were Come On Everybody and Something Else. That helped to solidify Eddie as a name to be remembered, or so we thought. Cochran, however, died at a very young age. It was a little more than a year after the plane crash that killed Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper. Uh, this has often been referred to as the day the music died. Cochran was very affected by the death of these musical peers, so much so that Cochran started to feel like he was going to die soon. According to Grunge.com, Cochran was obsessed and in a dreadful state over a strong feeling he had that he was going to die. Arnold Berlin, the manager of the Milverton Lodge in Manchester, England, said after the musician's death, He told me, I feel so horrible. There is nothing I can do about it, but I know I'm going to die. The book also stressed that the singer-guitarist was severely depressed and brooding in the last days of his life. However, British television producer Jack Good claimed that he never saw Eddie with a sense of doom, and was very complimentary of one of Cochrane's final performances. Eddie Cochran was amazing, even more dynamic than I've ever seen, Good said, as quoted by Colas, and how he used those bloodshot eyes, it looked fabulous and outrageous. This beat everything for turning a disadvantage into an advantage. On the night of April 16, 1960, Eddie Cochran had just wrapped up a successful tour of England where he and fellow American rock and roller Gene Vincent had performed in front of appreciative crowds. According to history, the tour had actually been extended an additional 10 weeks because of the intense demand for tickets. This underscored how the rebellious, hard-edged Cochran was seemingly more popular overseas than he was at home, where the lightweight, wholesome pop singers like Paul Anka and Frankie Avalon had emerged as part of the new breed of hit makers. Shortly after what would turn out to be his final concert, Cochran, his fiancée, songwriter Sharon Seeley, tour manager Patrick Tompkins, and Vincent hopped in a Ford console taxi and headed off to London. As the cab traveled through a winding road in the village of Chippenham, driver George Martin, who was supposedly traveling at speeds greater than 60 miles per hour, lost control of his vehicle and spun into a light post. As explained by the BBC, Shirley, Tompkins, and Martin escaped with relatively minor injuries. Vincent broke his leg, resulting in a limp that bothered him until his death in 1971. Cochran was the only occupant of the taxi who died in the accident, having suffered a serious head injury after getting thrown from the cab. He was taken to St. Martin's Hospital in Bath, where he died early the next morning. He was only 21 years old.